Hi, I'm Brandon Lin, and I'm here with San Gabriel High School's resident AP World History teacher, Ms. Osborne. Thanks for coming on. Certainly, Brandon. All right, so evidently from the beginning of this video, you played bass guitar. Um, <laughs> have you ever played in a band? And if you did, what was the name of your band? And what genre did you play? Um, well, the short answer is yes, uh, several bands, Ooh. but um, most, for the longest period of time, most of my musical career, if you want to call it that, was with one band called uh, Jean Carré. Yeah. Is that French? Uh, kind of uh, a Balinese term. Mm. Sounds way off. Right. And if you're interested in the meaning roughly, this is from another band member. It was his idea. Um, but uh, the meaning is roughly translated into like elastic time, time that stretches, or time that doesn't move, something like that. The reason why I gave you the kind of the real definition of the name is because it was relevant to the kind of music that we started playing. We had played together, several of us had played together in other bands, various sorts of things from progressive rock bands to um, much more popular kinds of um, bands trying to you know, get famous in the LA area and things like that. But when we got together in this incarnation, we started doing all just improvisation. The genre, you know, kind of morphed over time, but instrumental rock mm -hmm. with certainly elements of, some, of jazz in there. Later on, uh, we started integrating elements of ambient music and electronic. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just random bits, uh, industrial, some of it's kind of industrial sounding, so, but it was all instrumental. If you're familiar with old Pro, sort of progressive stuff, you know, it certainly had elements of, of old Genesis, certainly, certainly elements of old King Crimson, absolutely. Well, since we're talking about other musicians, are there any uh, bass players that influence your playing? Oh boy, certainly like somebody like Stanley Clark was a big influence, this guy Wil Wilbur Bascombe, uh, he played on a couple of Jeff Beck's albums uh, that I was really into when I was, well, when I was about your age, actually. <laughs> More recently, I would say you know, I've been trying to force myself to play more traditional jazz stuff. So uh, I actually take lessons. So my bass teacher, you know, I you know, kind of want him to emphasize some hardcore jazz players. So Paul Chambers would be one. Not that I play anything like him, but you know, I like to be influenced. Uh, Oscar Pettiford. And do you have any like real like memorable band stories? Because I've been recording, gigging, and whatnot. Memorable band stories. We would set up, like we'd have, there was a festival called Kahootek Festival, and we would set up, um, one time I remember we played, and this is when we were an improvisational band, on either side of the stage, we had uh, big canvases set up, and we had a couple of painters who painted in an improvisational style to our improvisational music. So that was pretty cool, yeah. It was live painting while live music. So that was that was really cool. You know, believe it or not, we, we actually had an odd kind of following and one, um, one set of fans, they were very into lasers. Like, they had their own lasers. And so a couple of times they created a laser light show for us. Do you have music with you to, uh, to share? A couple of different releases from the band Jean Carré. Mm -hmm. So we could put some of that on there. All right. All right, Mr. Osborne, now that we talked about your uh, bass playing, uh, let's go on to environmental conserv conservatism. I can't even talk today. <laughs> um, so as advisor of the environmental club, um, what was the, like, the pivotal moment where you decided that you just had to be a conservationist? Um, I wouldn't say that there was one. I would say that uh, you know, over a course of, of many years, maybe starting when I was a child and my, my father used to take us up to the mountains and uh, you know that would gave me some early exposure to the outdoors I think that gave me a little bit of an awareness early on mm -hmm. um, and again um, just getting older I, I think uh, you just gain an increased uh, appreciation for nature and the outdoors so I don't think that there was one particular moment that made me a quote-unquote conservationist Alrighty. Besides um, environmental club, do you have any other activities that you partake in to uh, conserve the environment? Well, you know, uh, I'm ashamed to say not, not as much as I should, um, but certainly have done 
things like uh, the Los Angeles River cleanup um, with uh, my daughter's Girl Scout troop. Um, mm -hmm. Done many beach cleanups, um, as much as those are, you know, impactful. It's, it's dubious. Right. Um, certainly, you know, donate money, which is that doesn't really count, but donate money to, you know, uh, environmental interests. But not not as much as as I would like to do and hope to do in the future, uh, especially maybe after I retire when I have a little more time. You take one step at a time, though, to conserve the environment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, again, um, I, I hope that maybe in the future I'll be able to do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good to hear. For our last question for today's interview, what would you say is your greatest contribution towards uh, conserving the environment? I guess it would be uh, making my daughter a little bit more aware, in a similar way that my parents took me to places and kind of gave me an appreciation for the outdoors. I, I hope that of doing the same thing for my daughter. You know, we've taken her a number of places over the years, both uh, a little bit out of the country, but within the U.S. And sometimes uh, against her will, she doesn't want to go. She doesn't like hiking sometimes, but uh, maybe that that'll pay off in the long run. The other thing I would say is hopefully maybe um, a little bit through the uh, environmental club. Um, Hopefully, again, adding just a little bit of awareness. I, I don't think like I'm, I'm creating any avid um, environmentalists, but uh, hopefully just a little bit, a little bit of information and knowledge that will translate uh, into people's adult lives. I, I personally would say that the environmental club would be like your widest reaching, you know, mm -hmm. contribution. So yeah, I would I would agree. I think it's the widest reaching and and over time too, because mm -hmm. it's you know there's been thousands of members over the course of 17 years. Right. And um, before we end it off, do we have any uh, parting um, words of like wisdom or just any like ideas you want to you wanna share? If I were to give any parting words, especially for younger people, it concerns me so much. You know, you guys are so under pressure, especially in high school and college. I don't know how to get around that so much, but I would say, you know, try to make sure that you have a little bit of fun. Yeah. You know, not everything is is always about grades. I know that sounds kind of contrary, uh, or, or maybe is a bit of a heresy coming from a teacher, you know, an AP teacher. But um, fun is important, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, not everything is about. It's always about academics and trying to to get ahead. And um, yeah, because one day you'll you'll be my age. And, uh, or hopefully, <laughs> I don't, maybe not, <laughs> maybe you don't want to be my age, but uh, you want to make sure that you have had some fun mm -hmm. over your life, you know. So. Yeah, that's wise words to live by. Well, thank you, Mr. Osborne. I appreciate you taking time out of your day for this. Certainly, Brandon. Alrighty, thank you.